Hello everybody, Jimmy is Promo here back again with another awesome video. And in today's video, we will go over the top 15 hidden features for your Samsung Galaxy Note 9. If you are brand new here at the channel of Jimmy's Promo and you own a Samsung Galaxy device, don't forget to hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you don't miss future videos. And don't forget about that playlist tab on the very top to check out the entire playlist I've uploaded so far for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. The first hidden feature that we will cover today is talking about editing or customizing your super slow-mo video. So let's say you went inside your camera, you went to the option of super slow-mo, you captured your video, and once everything is done and complete, it's inside your gallery. Now let's say that we look at one that I just got done shooting. This was actually here in my basement. Uh, it actually did a pretty good job with the lighting because I had a huge ring light that was behind the object that I was technically shooting. So it did a really good job. So as of right now, I'm just looking at a preview of this video inside the gallery. If you actually tap on the video itself it will play you do have a couple options down here that you can either have some of these turned on or turned off um, you can also cut it you can add music things like that but the one I wanted to show you is in the preview form which we're not technically playing the video if you swipe up it will give you the details of the video or picture you took. Now with this one being a video, it tells me the date and the time that I did it, where is it stored, but I can also change my clips. I can make my super slow-mo go in a loop. I can do it as a reverse or swing. But also when you choose one of those things, um, I made my hand do three different things. This one right here, I'm kind of clapping my, my fingertips together. Um, this one, I'm going between each fingertip, going from one to the next to the next. And then the other one here is just me moving my hand back and forth. It's Really a boring super slow-mo video, probably the worst one I have on my phone. But the cool thing is that you're actually able to choose any of these three areas. And let's say that I choose the middle one here. Um, I can actually make it go, as of right now, it's in forward. I can make it go backwards. And so now it's going in reverse of what I've done. Also, this one here is going to be kind of like a swing option. So you can see how it's going between a couple of the different fingers there. So this one is the swing. This one is the uh, forwards, and then this one right here is going to be the backwards. So the one thing that is kind of fun about this one is that you're able to kind of go through and pick through that video you made where you have several different slow motions that's happening, but you can change each individual one and then you're able to hit on save. Hidden feature number two is playing with how you view your recent applications. So right now when you hit on your recent applications, you're checking it out in this view. This is the thumbnail view. The only downside is that you're not able to check out all the rest of the applications on the top. And maybe you want this to be just a little bit more clean. Now on the very top right hand side, you hit on the more options. This is where you have the option of list view. List view makes it super easy, it's compressed, it's literally just what the application is. So if you wanted to head right back to it really fast, you are able to. So you don't have to scroll through all those different thumbnails to pretty much find the application that you do wanna hop into. Also, it gives you a fast option for the pinned windows, which is one of the hidden features that we'll talk about later in this video. And you also can see the multi-window as well as exiting. Hidden feature number three, we will head right back over into the recent app since we were just in this menu. And I wanna talk about another one that's inside of the more options. Up here is where you're able to lock applications. So if you have particular applications that you don't want them to close when you hit on the close all option, because maybe it's an application that you use all the time, you are able to lock it. So this right here is now locked. This one right here is unlocked. So you can see here that I have one, two, three, four, five applications. One of them is locked. The other four is unlocked. So what will happen now is let's say that we go back into the recent apps. Let me even go back to that thumbnail view, view that you are used to. You will see this option here where it has the lock option. These are all the X's. So what's going to happen is if I hit on close all, everything will be closed down except for the YouTube application. Now, if you want this one to kind of go away, you are able to actually tap on that button there, and then now you are able to close it. Hidden feature number four kind of brings something back from the past, and it's inside of the Samsung Notes. Now, inside of Samsung Notes with the newer Samsung devices, there is a couple things that were missing from the previous devices, like let's say the Note 3 and the Note 4 and the Note 5. Can't remember exactly which of those notes introduced the options of action memo, but action memo is a way that you're able to write something down and it'll do something for you. So as example, I went inside of Samsung Notes. I wrote down a phone number. It's random. Um, but once it is written out and I hover the S Pen over, you have this option up here that I'm able to phone and dial them, which is actually really cool. So if you run into somebody, you write down their number, but you don't want to look like that fool and you have to rewrite it into your contact list. If you've already written it down, you might as well just hover over it, hit on that call button and add them 
as a contact. You can do the exact same thing with a website. So right here, I just wrote down orbits.com and this one will take me over to the web address of orbits.com. So if you wrote down a website or anything like that, you don't have to retype it into your phone. You already have it written down, so you might as well use it. And another one is going to be with the date. So if there's something that you do have to add into your calendar, I kind of wish Samsung would be able to give the option of putting out the date and then maybe following the text after it would place it in for you. But if you know that on 12, 12 of 2018, you have maybe a dentist appointment, maybe you can write the words dentist appointment right below it. And when you tap on that date, it takes you directly there and then you're able to type in what it is. So this is one of the ways that you're able to use your Samsung notes to make it actionable, which is actually pretty cool. But this is one thing that I think Samsung can bring back, uh, make it a little bit more known and kind of expand on it and make it a little bit more intuitive. Now, since we already are inside of Samsung Notes, I'm gonna head right over into the hidden feature of number five. So let's say that you do have a Samsung Note that you have written out with your pen. Instead of going down here to the erase button to pretty much do any type of erasing, what you're able to do is actually just press and hold on this S Pen button. So here, I'll put it right back over into pen mode. But if you press and hold on the S Pen button and then you swipe through all those different numbers and letters and everything else, this will also act as a eraser. So it's kind of a quick way of going through and erasing things instead of going back and forth between pen and eraser. Now, if at any point in this video, I show you guys something that's brand new to you, make sure you guys write a comment below the video, letting me know which of these features or settings that you guys actually already knew and which ones were brand new for you. And again, if they are brand new for you, make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button. I think I've definitely earned a subscribe if you've learned something that's brand new with the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now for this next part, I went inside of my garage because I wanted to show you another example of how you're able to use the auto lock and auto exposure. So what'll happen is when you go to your your phone and if you go anywhere on the screen you press and hold what it'll do is it'll do a auto exposure lock and also auto focus on that object or that light so let's say that you do head over to a concert you can see in the way back of my uh, camera view it's super light but my motorcycle is not really able to be seen now if I was to press and hold on the screen for about two seconds outside it'll keep the light or the picture pretty light in the background but if I press and hold on the very front where my motorcycle is it'll actually lighten a little bit closer closer to my camera lens, bringing that object a little bit more into focus uh, with color, and then it kind of dims out and darkens the background to make a better image. Now, this will definitely come into play when you go to a concert. So let's say in the very back over here, you have a couple really extremely bright lights, but your artist is right over here. He might be blurred out or something is happening. Now, if you press and hold on that light, what could happen is make him pop out a little bit better or go to another situation in the uh, screen there, and you'll be able to make him pop out a little bit more and and kind of dim the lights in the back. So you'll really find this to be something that will be helpful when you're definitely at a concert. Hidden feature number seven is manipulating and changing the way that you're checking out your gallery. So let's say that we go inside of my camera here, but I do want to check out some of my older images and I want to find them extremely fast. You are able to basically slide out those albums from the left hand side of your viewing area. Also, the other thing you'd be able to do is do a pinch to zoom. So this is a way that you'd be able to pinch to zoom. You can make images bigger or smaller and you can see how big they are able to get or you can make them extremely small. And again, you can make them extremely big if you you want to and then outside of that you can bring in that gallery on the left hand side hidden feature number eight is playing with what happens when you press on that volume rocker so right now when you get your phone initially out of the box it'll change your ringtone so this way when you do head over to a movie or you head over to church the moment that you press down on your little volume rocker it'll change the volume tone but if you're somebody who always uses your volume keys for the media you are able to turn that one on. So this way, when you now change your volume rocker, it's changing the media volume. So if you're a little afraid of opening up an application, maybe YouTube or Facebook um, or Snapchat, and it's super loud, this is a way you're able to manipulate it right away, change the volume down just a little bit. So this way it's not going to scare people. But you have to remember, if you do change your media volume and you're heading to a movie, it's not changing your volume of your phone. That's one of the things that you do want to remember. So this is kind of where you want to choose do you want to use your volume rocker for the media or as a ringtone if you do have it as media don't worry about it you'd be able to just turn this one right into uh, vibrate right away if you do head over to a movie or church 
Hidden feature number nine is a easy way to turn on the screen of your phone, and it's another way to actually save your battery life. So as of right now, my phone is set up with the always on display. Now, because I don't look at my phone a billion times a day, this right here is not really saving me too much battery because it's kind of always lit. Um, one of the ways that you are able to save battery and conserve battery is by heading over into your settings. And what we're gonna do is we will search for a option that's called easy screen turn on. And right here, when you type in easy screen turn on it is underneath the accessibility and dexterity and actions so if you head over inside of the easy screen turn on and you turn this thing on the thing that's pretty nice about it is now you're able to turn off that always on display if you'd like to um, unless if you look at your phone a billion times a day um, then you might want to have this one turned on because this will actually save you battery life I hope that makes sense so if you look at your phone about 400 times a day you're turning that screen on just to see who texted you always on display will save you battery if you don't look at your phone that often then you might as well turn it off and then you could turn on this easy screen turn on so what will happen happen is when you wave your hand over the proximity sensors and the light sensors on top of the phone, it'll illuminate your phone only when you activate it too. So then this way you can see what is going on with uh, text messages and phone calls that you just missed. Now it'll only work when your phone is flat down like this. So you don't have to worry about it. You know, if you're in a car or if it's in your pocket, and as long as it is flat, it will work. You just hover your hand over the top and you're able to check out your notifications. Hidden feature number 10 is playing with the video lock screen. Now, when it comes down to some of the older devices, older than the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, there was an update that allowed you to have a video lock screen that you're able to choose from its own gallery or options of videos to choose. But when it comes down to the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, you're actually able to use a video from your own gallery, which is super cool. So if this video was something of maybe a fire pit or NASCAR and the car is racing zooming through or maybe it was a fountain that was in super slow motion it would be super cool but when you head over to a video inside your gallery on the very top right hand side you have an option to set it as a wallpaper now when you do this you do have to set it down to about 15 seconds you can't have a video longer than that so you're able to kind of go through here you can change which areas of the video that you want it to show um, so let's just say that I wanted to show this little small area once you hit on done it will save the video as something new and then you're able to set that one as your video lock screen now if you need to edit it one more time you are able to if not you can set it as the wallpaper and now it's set up as your lock screen now it's not really going to take up a lot of battery because number one when you look at your lock screen the video will dim out after a while uh, and, and it's not going to kill your battery versus your wallpaper if a video is as your wallpaper then you're looking at your wallpaper on your phone all the time you're looking at the home screens it's going to take off a lot of battery but as you can see here the screen dims out it's not going to take up too much maybe just a little bit more now when you are watching your video lock screen video um, you can see here that it has a bunch of stuff on the top but if you press and hold it allows you to watch your entire video as its whole entity and it'll kind of loop through and keep on going as you are still touching the screen once you let go all your time and notifications will pop up and then it'll dim back out hidden feature number 11 is playing with the video controls of the videos inside of your gallery so here is a video of my son Bentley playing soccer and what you are able to do is instead Instead of using the volume rocker buttons on the right hand side of the video if you press and hold and if you swipe down you're changing the volume of the video so if you needed to you can change the volume just by touching the screen instead of the volume rocker also what you can do is you can actually rewind it just by going left or right now this is a pretty short video it's only 18 seconds long but you're able to bring it right on back and then now on the left hand side of the video you can actually change the brightness so you can either use your fingers too um, you don't have to use the s pen so if you swipe up or down on the left hand side it's brightness the right hand side is going to be your volume and then anywhere in the middle is going to be zooming frontwards and backwards hidden feature number 12 is going through and checking out what happens when you hit on the s pen button inside of each particular application now what i mean by that is let's say you're already in the camera application and you want to know what a one or double press does of the button if you just hover over your air command it'll tell you what that single and double press does now, if you actually hit on the air command, this is where you can change what those buttons do for that application. So if you want to change it with inside of that application, uh, then you are able to. And that is a little bit easier than pulling down your notifications panel, going inside of the S Pen remote, 
finding the application that you want to change, and then making your change there. Now, this also will work with many other applications other than just the camera. So here we're checking out Social Blade. If I was to hover over Air Command, this was a way that I'm able to check out that I can do scroll down and scroll up. Now, if I wanted to change any of these, I can do backwards, forwards, or do nothing as well. Hidden feature number 13 is playing with the intensity of your flashlight. So on the very top where you have your quick settings, you have all these different settings that's going on. A lot of them are quick. If you press and hold on an icon, it takes you into the full details, the full setup of that, um, that setting. But if you're to tap on the word, it'll be a quick view. So that's the difference between Bluetooth full setting versus the Bluetooth quick setting. Now, let's say that you wanted to turn on your flashlight, but you don't want to wake up your spouse. Now, if you actually just go right on back and do exactly exactly what I did here, which is tap on the word, then you're gonna go inside of where you can change the intensity. So you have level one, this is a way that you go into a room, maybe plug something in, um, grab something really quiet, but you don't wanna wake up the spouse. And this is if you're maybe outside and it's super dark or you're in your basement um, and you don't wanna turn on a light or you don't have a light. This right here is just the normal default level three, but it's pretty nice. Not a lot of people know that you are able to actually click on the word of flashlight, not just the icon and change the intensity of that flashlight. Hidden feature number 14 is adding the bright brightness bar to the very top of where your settings are. Now, when you pull down the notifications panel, you have to pull it down twice in order for you to view your brightness levels. Now, for me, I find it super easy if it's already sitting there and that is being done by hitting on this down arrow and adding it in to show the control on the top. This is one of those first five things I do when I get my phone is adding the brightness level to the very top because it makes it just super easy. So now when you pull down the notifications panel, you're able to change the brightness of however you want to, whenever you want to, versus pulling it down twice and changing it or going inside of your settings here. The very last hidden feature that we will cover today is number 15 of 15, and it is called Pin Windows. Now, I love Pin Windows, especially with the application of YouTube, because this is a way that I'm able to lock my son into one application without him getting out of it and playing with either the camera, calling people, um, texting people, deleting images, things like that. So if you do have a son or daughter and you don't want them to get out of a application that you set them up to use, this is perfect for you. So first off, pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon icon and on the very top this is where you search for pin windows now if you only search for pin win it will find it right away you'll tap on that and this is where you are able to turn it on now I also have the option down here because my son is eight he's able to read um, you do want to turn this one on here which is asking for a pin before unpinning now this will also work for an adult too as long as they don't know your pin of your phone you're able to lock somebody into one application and once they try to get out then they're actually locked out of your phone as well. So how this works is that you wanna go inside of the application, hit on the recent app, and you want to scroll up to where you see this pin button. Now, just as a example, let's say we go inside the calculator, and now we hit on the recent apps. Well, now the only application we can pin is the most recent application. So I can't really pin YouTube at all. So you have to go back to YouTube, hit that recent app button. This is where you have pin windows and now it is locked. In order for you to get out of this pin window option, you have to press and hold on recent apps. That's why I'm stating if your son or daughter is able to read um, or if it's an adult, you do wanna turn on that option of pin. So now that they're in there, the application is pinned. They try to hit the home button, nothing's gonna happen. They, they are able to hit the back button if they go inside of a video or a different menu. Um, but you know, there's really nothing that they're able to do. Even if they try to turn off your phone, it doesn't matter, it's gonna go right back to your lock screen anyways. So let's say that they are old enough, they press and hold on recent apps. Now your phone is locked um, and you're not able to get into it with your little S Pen unlock option either because your phone was now locked and the S Pen was already out. So I, there is a feature of unlocking your Note 9 with the S Pen button, um, but it will not work with this option here. So now what you are able to do now is put in your pin and now your phone is going to be unlocked. So that has been the top 15 hidden features of the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. I hope that you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit on subscribe. You can hit on that little red circle right over here on the very bottom left-hand side. You can subscribe that way. Share this video with your friends and family and social media sites. And outside of that, I'll see you guys later. Thank you.